Welcome to today's episode of The Growth Zone. I am Christian Bartsch. What is the core benefit of listening to this show? Business leaders in corporate and privately held companies gain insights into trends and strategies that provide them with a competitive advantage in the marketplace. Each episode focuses on an area such as marketing, sales, innovation or funding that is absolutely critical to the growth of companies, whether they are startups or corporate global players, where management needs to juggle the challenges of market entry or knowing how to navigate the uncertainties of disruptive developments. Mind feeding is where clarity evolves and helps solving organizational challenges. For those who listen to the entire episode, I have a special surprise gift. I am working on some great guests that are industry leaders in management, innovation and marketing. Let's get started on today's episode. Today I've got with me Arjun Ray and we're going to be talking about raising capital for your big idea. He's a firm believer that every small medium-sized business should have an unfair advantage to compete against unlimited marketing budgets. He himself has raised from professional investors and personally invested nearly 500,000 in pre-seed venture capital funding as well as obtaining corporate partners, including Fortune 500 companies such as Microsoft and Google, resulting in over $150,000 in strategic resources. So, uh, who is Arjun? Well, Arjun is a New York-based entrepreneur who is on a mission to support small businesses with the power of visualized data science and artificial intelligence for digital marketing at hellowoofy.com. Since high school, Arjun has been networking with some of the most well-known entrepreneurs and even worked on a few projects and startups of his own. Upon graduation, Arjun pursued his career opportunities and came to New York City where he enrolled at the New York Institute of Technology in 2011 with scholarships and grants. Following a few weeks into college, Arjun launched his second startup, FuelBright.com, a social media agency focused on small businesses and startups and a student-focused organization, The BizDan. Arjun currently lives in New York City with his girlfriend, two cats and a dog. You can find him working from home, doing carpentry, pitching his startup at a meetup or driving around town on his e-scooter. So we are going to have Arjun now on our show and let's go and having on. So today I'm with Arjun Ray and we're going to be talking about raising capital for your big idea. Arjun, can you please tell us a little bit more about yourself before we go deep into our topic? Absolutely. And thank you so much for, for inviting me on the show. This is definitely one of my, you know, favorite topics to talk about, which is helping other startups, you know, raise capital, you know, giving them tips and tricks and things of that nature. But of course, everyone should consult their own financial advisor and uh, seek their own, uh, you know, mentorship and advice before making any financial decisions. But it's definitely something I've been doing for, for a very long time. So start off as a teenager, you know, working uh, or working on a startup that was in the communication advertising space, learning firsthand at, at was it's like 16, 17, what it takes to put a deck together, you know, network with some of the most successful individuals in the industry, you know, cold email them and get them on the phone, you know, uh, get them to, you know, even listen to you, your ideas and, and give feedback. Learn all of that. It was almost like a crash course MBA at 17, um, which definitely proved to be very 
beneficial when it came to my next thing, which is running an agency. Uh, when I was when I came to New York about eight eight nine years ago at this point, and uh, that that itself was an experience because that led me to building uh, a platform that. And we ended up raising capital for nearly a million dollars before I graduated college. In fact, um, that I was able to use to help other small businesses, creatives with project management, being able to collaborate with one another, almost like an Iron Man situation where you could drag and drop people and projects and files in a very intuitive dashboard um, and uh, assign tasks and see them you know, visually. And then uh, end up, you know, solving another problem that I felt for a very long time, which was social media, mar- well, social media management and also marketing for small businesses, which for, for a very long time has been very clunky, has been very data starved, um, especially for small businesses who can't afford to have a lot of, you know, expensive tools, expensive advertising platforms. They tend to be the ones that get pushed out of the way when it comes to, you know, bigger companies with more resources, uh, you know, deploying those resources, unlimited marketing budgets and the small business owners, especially today with COVID, they're not able to compete unless they have a platform like ours uh, for the price of a cup of coffee. Um, so that's my mission now is is raising uh, is helping uh, helping companies the smallest of small businesses around the world with marketing with our, using artificial intelligence. Uh, we're raising capital right now through equity crowdfunding, which is, feels really good because a lot of our customers can now own a piece of our company and be a part of the journey. Which we can talk about what that you know how people can go about that and how you know some of the benefits of equity crowdfunding, Reg A, Reg CF, and things like that. Oh, yeah. So um, where would I have to go if I want to uh, buy a share of your company? What's the website for that? Yeah. So the crowdfunding, um, the equity crowdfunding uh, landing page is simply republic, like R-E-P-U-B-L-I-C dot C-O uh, slash four slash hello woofy, which is W-O-O-F-Y. It's also on our website. It's the first thing you'll see on the top uh, tops uh, when you get to hellowoofy.com is the is the blue bar that will lead you to that. Oh, yeah, that's that's great. So uh, you're based in New York City, is that right? Yes, uh, in my opinion, the best city on earth, uh, and something that you know I've been aspiring to kind of quote unquote make it in New York, and uh, you know definitely have. Uh, progressed quite a bit since I moved to New York, which was, you know, with a $900 a month budget, <laughs> 700 of which was for rent. Um, I you know, definitely have uh, have sort of made it, but we're always on a, on a mission to continuously make it with new goals, new aspirations. So New York is definitely one of those cities that makes you feel like that. Yeah, I know, because I used to have as well a business in, in London that was as well quite an expensive place to be, but uh, very different than to a city like Munich, for instance, where I'm currently now recording. Um, that's a, quite a difference as well in the culture. And speaking of that, now with the, the whole pandemic and so on, how do you keep your team together, especially to be efficient? And uh, are they all based in New York or how is it? That was a great question. So we've always been remote, actually, since the very beginning. We've uh, we've been, you know, we're based in Ukraine, in Mexico, Bangladesh, Pakistan, India. Um, you know, we we have people all over the world. Um, there's 16 of us uh, working on the on the company, um, but I'm the uh, I'm the only one here in New York. And then we have uh, one of my other friends who's helping us with paid marketing in LA. So we're definitely, you know, six feet apart, more than six feet apart um, as far as social distancing is concerned. But uh, it allows us to continuously work uh, pretty much 24-7. Yeah, that's, that's good because then, of course, uh, if you have an idea, somebody else can work on it. And then the next morning you can get the the, the piece delivered and you can give them a feedback and they have some time overnight at least chance to think about it and maybe even adapt something instead of you sitting there and waiting well, when's the next thing when are you getting ready i want to see the next change <laughs> give me peace <laughs> you yeah. think of the, prog- the program must need as well time to think of it the engineers say to think hmm, how could i solve this and that yeah yeah well what that what 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 that means is that i tend to work through the night and then through the day and then through the evening so because uh, because I know my team is is available, um, so I <laughs> I tend to want to sleep a little bit more, um, but I, I tend to enjoy enjoy my work uh, late at night. <laughs> yeah, and, and maybe it's as well advantage that at New York at a certain time it'll be quiet, and it's it's great thing. Mm. Yeah, I sometimes used to do that as well uh, when it's uh, really convenient or when you've got something special to do, you're just more focused. Uh, you don't have the noise from the neighbors and from the city and so on. 
And mm-hmm. of course, on the other hand, New York uh, with its famous fire engines can be quite loud. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. Um, we actually live right next to a precinct, uh, a police department mm-hmm. and the fire department. So from time to time, it does happen. But it, it's it's one of those things that reminds you of the hustle and the, the amount of grit you need in a city like this in, in order to truly survive and make it. Um, we're really br- blessed to, to be living right next to a park where Central Park, uh, if you go in uh, in the area we live in, you can you have waterfalls, you have hiking trails, you have picnic grounds like it is incredible like yes you could be in the middle of Times square but we're kind of you know had the best a uh, little bit of, of of both worlds yeah i know that because we our offices that we had once before uh, was based as well just right to the fire engine <laughs> station <laughs> with six fire engines so you always uh, regularly got them mm. to uh, move out and so on and you of course got the noise but it's it's not that uh, of an issue that much um the key thing is, I think for most businesses, it's a challenge of you've got a good idea and you're thinking, well, that is an idea. How do I raise capital? Um, what's your experience as well with your own business? Uh, yeah. How you've managed it as well? You always have to build an MVP and, and a prototype. Um, I see, you know, I've raised capital with a PDF with a whole bunch of wireframes, but those wireframes were pretty much clickable. They were, you know, there was no backend. It was just a series of images put on top of each other and linked to each other. Um, we have tools called Envision uh, today, which Clark is a is a great entrepreneur that built that tool. Um, but uh, you, you need those, you need those uh, little visual uh, cues for an investor or even a customer. If you're trying to get customer, just, you know, if you're doing customer discovery and trying to learn from the customer, uh, whether your solution is solving uh, something that they're experiencing or not, right? So you always, always want to do a wireframe. Better yet, if it's a prototype with some backend logic and coding uh, in, involved as well, something that you can deploy to the world and have people around the world actually starting to use it on and you can launch it on product hunt you can launch it just but then your social spheres things of that nature that's even better but the point is do not raise capital because it's it'll be very expensive at that stage until you start getting some usage and some feedback and start to see some you know uptick in terms of uh you know adoption by the customer itself right um and so that's the number one thing. Find someone on Fiverr, find someone on Upwork, spend, you know, a few hundred dollars or, you know, depending on the complexity of what you're trying to build, you know, spend a few thousand dollars and get something up and running and then try to see if anyone will pay you, even if it's a dollar or if it's something, you know, very nominal. Um, that to an investor definitely shows that there is something here and maybe putting in a small check of 10 to 25,000 as an angel will uh, will help you continue that until you actually have to raise a full institutional round. Um, now, typically it used to be angels versus VCs. Now we have a third entrant with, with thanks to the Jobs Act, which is, uh, you know, Reg CF, Reg A uh, raises, which allows you to raise capital from the public um, uh, for as low as $100 or depending on what your limits are. In our case, it's $100. People are our customers and other people are able to own a piece of our company for as low as $100. So that is a third element, which is entirely driven by, you know, how you're brand is perceived online what are your you know metrics and things of nature so you once you start getting that uptick you may may or may not want to raise institution you may want to raise a little bit of angel angel funding maybe two to three hundred thousand dollars and then continue building the products so, and the business where you have full control um because remember with institutional rounds you you know you have to give up something whether it's a board seat or preferred shares or things of that nature um you should definitely look into all the minute details of, of raising capital um but uh with work cf and crowdfunding it's very much automated it's very much about you know how what the 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 public perceives of your brand. Um, and uh, it's kind of like a mini IPO, but not really. But that's something that I do recommend. So start with the, start with the wireframe, start with the prototype, get some traction, start building a deck together. That's probably, you know, something the most, you know, one of the things that you need to do early on is putting a well put together deck. Um, then there's so many templates online that talk about how to put one together. But uh, those are the things that will tell an investor that you're serious about a business and you're not just doing this as a hobby. Yeah, so that's, Actually, quite interesting thing, as you said, you've got a, a quite a diverse team all around the world. And uh, so your platform, are you using, uh, it's all in the cloud, I understand. Or? Yep. Yeah. And we actually use our own platform to promote the, the our campaigns as well. 
Cool. <laughs> That's good. So you actually uh, are able as well to improve your tool as you go because you notice yourself uh, from using it mm. where you see, oh, I'd like to have this feature or this and this isn't going as fast as I want or I want to have this little change and that. And, and you can try it out and see how it actually works for you. And if it works for you, quite great by adjusting, maybe adding in some new feature and testing out for other people as well in your uh, industry or in your kind of business, it'll be working as well fine once they actually start adopting the features. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's the best way, it's the best feeling as if it's kind of like eating your own dog food, right? If, you're, if your product is so great and you can use it for your own business and propel it forward, then then you've got something here that you know could, could actually become something else uh, helping other small businesses and that's kind of we've been very blessed to be able to do that for for ourselves yeah that's true because when i think of it um i think 30 years ago bill gates himself as well said um we have to we have to use our own tools we have to eat our own products uh, so to speak because otherwise uh, why should our customers use the products and he was actually referring to microsoft exchange at that time uh mm -hmm. where at the time where microsoft exchange wasn't in every big company around the world so by use and saying yes we microsoft are using that product as well they say okay they are themselves com uh, confident in their own product because mm. obviously at a certain time they were using something different and they of course had to as well get themselves as well to start using the product because by then they would notice oh this isn't working or this we don't have and this hey we need this feature and it improves and even a big company like Microsoft nowadays, they, they started as well small and uh, had to find a way mm. towards global dominance. And uh, you have got your, your niche where you're focused on a certain kind of business and certain kind of areas. And so currently your clients, are they all US based or from different countries? And so how, how does it look like? Yeah, so we have, we have uh, well over 5,200 uh, small businesses around the world using our product. And uh, they're they tend to be global. They're not, you know, from any given region specifically. Um, we tend to obviously be very skewed towards uh, U.S. and and European, Western Europe, Europe. But uh, we do have, you know, customers in Eastern Europe. We have, you know, people in Australia and in in parts of Africa and 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 uh, and Latin America as well. So, but at the end of the day, they all have the same need, which is you know, building their business online, especially with COVID happening today. Um, and they need a solution that is not only intelligent, 10 times, a thousand times more intelligent than what they're doing right now, but is, you know, is for the price of a cup of coffee. It's affordable. It's, you know, designed for, you know, their budgets. It's designed for their needs and things like that. I think that's one of the most important things is to keep in mind is a lot of our competitors, so-called competitors, their price points um, almost, uh, you know, remove a huge part of the population of business owners that are looking to get started or, or have are looking to get started because they were you know running their business very traditionally and now they understand that they need to be very digital um and uh, and so they there's a there's a mindset shift that we're trying to push in the industry that Products have to be affordable by everyone, if it, and in order to progress, you know, push society forward. And that's why we're saying we always provide data science, artificial intelligence for the price of a cup of coffee, and that allows anyone to compete against unlimited marketing budgets. Because here's the fact of the matter, right? Just like you're the average of the five people you hang out with, you're also the average of the five tools you end up using. So if you're not using something that is AI driven and intelligent like Hello Woofy, or if you're not using something like Republic, which is an automated, almost an automated, you know, platform for raising capital, um, of course you have to put in a lot of work into it. But CrowdCF or Reggae, you know, offerings they're a new way of raising capital. You don't have to run around Sand Hill Road and uh, and have to raise capital and go from meeting to meeting, fly across the world, you know, meet investors. There's a new way of doing things, and you have to be very efficient. Um, and and that's kind of the world that we're you know pushing and going into, especially with the COVID situation. Oh, yeah. And so uh, how much do your users then usually pay? Is it a monthly or is it annual fee? How does it work? Uh, it is a yearly fee. It's $49 a year. And uh, and we charge them every year. It's a, it's a lifetime deal at the moment. So we will never increase the um, the pricing on them. But that's that's the current offer. Great. It sounds like quite, a, quite an affordable range. Uh, when you compare what maybe other big tools might cost, uh, I've been using all sorts of different platforms and that, 
Uh, I myself was as well a certified Infusionsoft partner and uh, mm. the price is definitely much, much higher. Of course, the tool can do a lot and you need a lot of training. You need a lot of uh, external advice to actually make it create money for your business. And if you just don't have the staff, you don't have the resources, it becomes quite a quite a problem. And even if you move to a different product in a, in a similar category, it'll still be not only costly, in licensing, but it's the operational cost that creates extreme costs. And it sounds like yours is really a good start where, where small companies have a chance to get started. And, and even if they need time to build, they know it's not going to uh, practically break the back with the expenses. Yeah, no, exactly. So expenses is one thing, and the financial, uh, you know, benefits of using our platform, or, or the the you know the the, the uh, lower price point is one thing. But you know, when you start typing, you know, something in our platform, it automatically completes the words and sentences for you. It also gives you the right emoji suggestions. Emojis are a very un, you know under the radar secret in driving engagement. We figure out based on 153 million data points which ones are going to be the best in terms of you know relevance and contextual relevance. Um, and then if you upload images, it'll figure out hashtags that are appropriate. So there's a lot of elements in here that we're like, if you're going to be, if you're going to work with an agency, but they're only going to work with you for a couple of hours a day, maybe a couple of hours a, a, a week, what if you had an agency that was available 24/7? Right. And and speaking of fundraising, Republic or any any platform you use is also available 24 seven. It's not that you have to show up at a nine o'clock meeting to raise ten thousand dollars. You have the ability to work your behind off and, and promote the campaign and, and raise capital pretty much 24 seven for a couple of months until the campaign ends. Um, so it's a very we're moving in a very fast paced world. And, and people have to understand that if you want to be competitive, you also have to be very fast-paced and iterative with everything you're doing and experimental. So you, you actually, when you started your business, actually you, you funded the, the start initial start with your own capital and then got the thing running, got the first few clients and then started uh, getting additional investors. And how, how did it work? Yep, exactly. So I, we, we, we worked with a developer over Upwork and we built a prototype. Originally, the prototype was supposed to be an iPhone app for small businesses to be able to automate their social media um, on, you know, while they were on the go. So in the Uber, on the airplane, wherever they were, we were essentially building a social media scheduler for people on the go. We quickly figured out after getting 10,000 downloads that <laughs> almost everyone wanted a bigger screen size. They, you know, they, they just wanted a desktop. They wanted a laptop size screen to be able to manage their their uh, social media. So we pivoted. We raised an additional capital. We got into an accelerator program, and uh, we started adding intel you know intelligence, a lot of artificial intelligence in. We quickly figured out that was the way to go. Uh, and within a year or so, we we launched the product, and uh, we were able to finally figure out you know where what was our sweet spot in the in the marketplace, both from a price standpoint, but also from a from a technology standpoint, because obviously 5,200 users, we have a very very low churn. We have a about a three percent churn, which means every you know every hundred users that join, um, uh, three of them will ask for their refunds or returns and things like that, which is very low. Ninety seven percent, ninety six percent of our users come back over and over again. Yeah, that's that's a quite a good figure actually. And the platform is, uh, I suppose, very fast. And that are you using anything like Azure or Amazon, or or what what kind of platform are you using to be as successful as you've been now? Yeah, so we've been using Google Cloud actually as our, our as our backend. Um, but the I think the, the 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 technology itself obviously has to be built, and it goes entirely the credit goes to the team that has put it together really well. Um, using this, you know, the latest standards, the privacy security has been always our you know number one goal. And so keeping those things in mind, as a startup, you also have to keep in mind that you're competing with not just other startups, you're competing with established brands, established companies. And so you really have to bring your A game when it comes to, you know, coding efficiently, uh, putting in parameters, redundancies, you know, all of the things that a, a, a big company would do, you have to do a small scale version of it. Um, and that to an investor shows that you're serious about, you know, building a long-term business. You're, you're serious about their capital. If they're going to put money into a business that is thinking that far ahead, because we're, we're not building it for two years, right? We're building a brand 
a company that's, you know, we have a 10 year vision in our slide deck in our investor deck, we have a 10 year vision in it. And, and the idea is to help all small businesses around the world with writing, with linguistics, perfecting their copywriting, using data science, you know, hundreds of millions of people at their fingertips in terms of what works, what doesn't work. Uh, and we're starting to do that now with our Google Chrome extension. You can literally type emails, you can type blog posts uh, anywhere on the internet using the same technology as, as the one found inside Hello Woofy. And uh, we're only going to you know, make that vision a bigger reality than it was yesterday. Wow, that sounds really, really great. Um, so definitely, it sounds that some you definitely need to uh, look at the tool and uh, go as well to the crowdfunding and use that opportunity because we never know. Maybe your company is the next Microsoft or <laughs> the next other big uh, unicorn that might eventually develop as you start growing in your business, in your niche and getting a, a, a market that obviously isn't really that much uh, tapped on because all the big ones price point wise are actually talking to the big companies who can afford to have maybe three, four, five people of the workforce have actually time to do all that stuff. And if your, your tool is so affordable and at the same time, I think it must be easy to use, huh? Oh yeah, it is color driven. There is so much white space. It, it most of the tools out there, they feel like it was they were built by engineers for engineers, or you know the it, they feel very much like the Bloomberg terminals of the world. In some cases, in our in our case, it you know if there was a museum of beautiful interfaces, I know Dribble is kind of like that. I would definitely say uh, uh, you know this this the, the the UI would be one of those things that should be uh, should be you know talked about there. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. So it was great having you here on the show, uh, Arjun. And yeah, um, where, where can the people again have a look at your product and get in contact with you? Well, the number one thing I'll say is join our Facebook group, Content Masters by Hello Woofy. Just go to facebook.com and put in Content Masters by Hello Woofy. And, and the reason I say that is because it's a community of small business owners and podcasters, uh, much like yourself, who are literally telling us what you know they're going through in terms of what features they want us to build, what is their experience using our platform, what can we improve on. They're also meeting one another. They're meeting other clients. They're meeting other guests. It's a very vibrant community. I also invite you, Christian, to join because we're 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 not just building another company. We, like I said, we want we're using Reg CF to raise capital from our customers. We're you know building the community so we can learn from our customers twenty four seven what we need to build for them. Um, so it's a it's a very different way of building it. And yeah, you know we will we'll keep building products that are affordable and you know for the price of a cup of coffee. But the the data that we're you know able to get. And the way we can intelligently give the data feedback or the results back to the customer, that's light years ahead of what they're able to do on their own. It gives them a fighting chance. So if they, if you guys want to join, go ahead and just click join button on Content Masters. Um, and you can also reach out to us on HelloWoofy.com uh, or email me at Arjun at HelloWoofy.com. That's great. So thank you for being on the show. And yeah, I'm sure we'll be speaking in the future sometime. All right. Thanks so much. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of The Growth Zone. 
with Christian Barge. Thank you for listening. Please leave a review or rating here on iTunes or on podchaser.com. If you found the content helpful, then share it on social media. I would like to invite you to follow our show so that you don't miss the upcoming interviews with leaders in the market. Simply visit the website follow.prmediareach.com I will be adding the link also to the description of this episode so that you just need to click on that link. For those of you who are listening and signing up to follow the show, I have reserved a free copy of the Ultimate Guide on Content Marketing. This is the strategy that got me top corporate clients like McDonald's, Linde, Hewlett Packard, Deutsche Bank, Volvo and many others. That strategy has been working for over 10 years. It also got me contracts with police, transport authorities, military and several universities and even leading research institutes. For sure, it also worked wonders as it got me many small, medium-sized entrepreneurs and enterprises as clients. And that even included international clients from all around the world. The link to sign up for our free broadcasting service and the guide is follow.pr mediareach.com That will give you access to the most recent version of my ultimate guide on content marketing. You can follow me as well on Twitter by using the Twitter handle CAP Barge. That's spelled Charlie Alpha Papa Bravo Alpha Romeo Tango Sierra Charlie Hotel. Yes, that is C-A-P, Barge. Charlie, Alpha, Papa, Bravo, Alpha, Romeo, Tango, Sierra, Charlie, Hotel.